we're going to have a conversation with uh, Louis Lorenzana, uh, who is uh, kind enough to fly in from uh, the Philippines to be here tonight. And uh, also tonight, uh, we've got David Furchgott, uh, who's the busiest retired person I know. He's uh, formerly head of International Sculpture Center, publisher of Sculpture Magazine, and for 24 years, founder and director of the International Art and Arts and Artists. Uh, he really put this show together. Uh, he did an amazing job. And uh, we have to thank the uh, Philippine Embassy, the Embassy of the Philippines. Uh, I, we have here tonight Daryl Ann Atartes. Is she here? Hi. Uh, she's the uh, third secretary and vice counsel for public diplomacy. And we have Renato Pedro Ovia. Thank you so much for being here. He's the deputy chief of mission. Uh, so we're very happy to have them. And also present is our great patron and the person most responsible for this exhibition, Ken Hakuta, who's probably hiding somewhere. I know. Oh, there you are. Right, right up front. Thank you, Ken. So we're going to have a uh, conversation with Lewis, and uh, hopefully you will be able to join in uh, as, we, as we go along. Um, I have a, a question for you, Lewis, um, about the title of your show. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about it, Heroes and Losers, the Edification of Lewis Lorenzano. The first part, Heroes and Losers, uh, sort of makes us look for these characters in the show who are the heroes who are the losers. And the second part, the term edification indicates uh, there's some sort of education or improvement uh, happening. Uh, so maybe you could talk a little bit about the title of, to your work and the concept for this show. Hello. Yeah, yep. uh, it's working. Hi, good evening, everyone. Talk right into it because you have to talk right into it. Uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> they can hear you. That's it. Yeah, this um we we had a uh, really long yes. long conversation with David and Ken and Jack uh, when we were decide, deciding how to to you know, encapsulate all the artworks into in, into a certain you know uh, overall idea of the show and then um, so we decided to like the heroes that here. Uh, they're 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 like the forefathers of the Philippine uh, our country in the Philippines, uh, and then the losers uh, came from the the stories of the artworks from yeah ar around here, the personal personal journey, personal um, expression of a. Of what happened in my life during the times when I was starting out in my career. So, like, so we have uh, commentaries and um, about what's happening in the country, and then uh, incorporating the 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 values or the the sacrifices of the forefathers, and then. And then the personal ones, the are at the back. So the, the heroes and losers. So your your career began actually in politics, right? Yes. Um, right after graduating college, I was really planning to s study law, and um, so I had this three year stint in the Philippine Senate. I was a Technical writer of one one of the senators during that time, and then um, that's where this. Uh, no, we, we we were very in in my school in UP Diliman, University of the Philippines. We are really into. Um, we're very aware of what's happening around us, and we we always show that. Uh, so, when I was in the Senate, that's where like. You, you you are in that in that circle where in uh, 
firsthand you will experience uh, how how the government is running is being run compared to what you have studied in school it's very different so that's when uh, after that i decided to like follow my passion and um be into art uh enter into an art career and then the first works that i done after that uh Senate days are this this artworks the back so full of uh, political uh, commentaries and then at the same time yeah the personal ones are around here yeah. Yeah. Did that. well maybe you could talk for example about this glorious painting here uh, yeah what are, what are we what are we seeing here yeah, this one, um, there are two verses in Bible, in the Bible, wherein they, get it right up here. they have a different, uh, different uh, explanation of what akaldama means. Akaldama is a Jewish word. Um, there's a verse wherein the akaldama was defined as the, the, the land that Judas bought with that 30 silver coins that was paid to him when he betrayed Jesus Christ. So, and then there's another one where it says that uh, the field of blood or a traitor's land. So during that time, we were, we were like, when I was fresh graduate from college, the former president, uh, Erap Estrada, was just dethroned. And then we were the ones who were on the street, like, like uh, we were we were there in Edsa, a famous uh, long highway where in a, the first Edsa revolution happened during the Marcus time. And then we were there during era former President Era Estrada. We were fighting for Gloria Macapagalaroyo, you know, fresh grad, full of full of. Um, um, Expectations of what, how, what, what should go the government be? So we were rallying during the time, and then after, after four years, the one, the one who we fought for, somehow, we felt betrayed. So, Jose Rizal, our national hero, with all the bullets, uh, bullet holes courtesy of the Spanish government, uh, 1890, 1890, 96, right? Uh, yeah. Came from heaven, came down from heaven with that monster so that that monster would, would, would eat all these like, generals who were very rich, senators who were like monsters, and then um, I just depicted President Arroyo with just like a mouth because there's no action in government, it's just talking talk. And that's Malacanang Palace where the president lives. And then um, many poor Filipinos cannot eat but they're having a feast. And then um, it's like a revolution, calling for a revolution where in, um, if not, if, if not us, who? If not through this, how? If not now, when? So, the political um, um, atmosphere during that time is um, very, very strong. And uh, many artists and, um, uh, from different, different uh, uh, either it be music or literature, during this time, we were really very uh, active in showing our um, sentiments to, to, our, to that government. So that government during the time is called uh, Field of Blood, tra Traitor's Land. So um, I hope there's no relative of uh, President Makapagalaroy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
What? This is 2005? 2006, yeah? 2006, I guess. And then, um, um, who are the four here? George Washington uh, in the Mount Rushmore, right? George Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the heroes there on the other side, they're like the, the pillars of the they, they, they fought the, the, the Spanish uh, government. We were under 300, 300 years under the Spanish government uh, before they sold us to America. So, <laughs> so that's General Luna. Uh, it's like mal presidente. It's like Spanish uh, uh, translation of a, a bad president. So it's not the president, it's a bad president. Wherein those who really love the country, they, they, they got killed by, by their own blood. Um, this one is, um, we call Apolinario Mabini, he's the tick tank of the, the revolutionary government during the Spanish time. And, uh, this one is, um, I made this painting because there was this time when in, iPod was was getting famous in the Philippines, and then I saw I saw many kids like wearing iPod and then having different colored hair. So I started that you're still brown skin, and then you have a yellow hair, and uh, and that's the agony of Apo superstar, wherein you are losing your own identity and um, getting influenced by 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 Western world, forgetting your Forgetting your roots and uh, values that that were uh, passed by the forefathers, and then uh, that's Andres Bonifacio also was killed by 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 a Filipino, and uh, he's the one who's supposed to be the the first president of the Philippines, and then it says merry go round. La tragedia de Supremo, the, the tragedy of the, the Supremo or the Supreme Leader. And uh, it still happens now. If, you're, if you love your country, you show you love your, your country, you can, you can be killed. Um, not necessarily physically, or you can be silenced. Yeah. It's just a merry-go-round. Uh, uh, And then, yeah, th that one is who killed Jose? Not not the physical Jose Rizal, th not the, the the person, but uh, who killed this memory? Um, it's also a sentiment of um, how we Filipinos uh, are getting influence and um, forgetting their roots, and th that you don't know who you are anymore. So I talk a lot. So, I, uh, I've learned that you are a largely self-taught artist. And looking at your work, I see a lot of sources that uh, you wouldn't ordinarily uh, be exposed to in art school. And so, I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in if, if I'm right, um, certainly there's the, uh, there's, there's the street art, you know. There's uh, B-movie posters. And then uh, I grew up in California, so there's uh, Los Angeles custom car culture and the work of Ed Big Daddy Roth and his favorite subject, Ratfink, as well as San Jose's Chicano culture and its lowriders. And then um, maybe Zap Comics too. Any, any Zap Comics in there? So, and Mad, yeah, Mad Magazine. So, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, how has your lack of formal training been a good thing for your work? I think. Um, yeah, that's a good question because now my artwork is all about texture, line, color, surface. Starting to, you know, when I, when I had a chance to go around the world, visit museums, visit galleries, um, it, uh, 
the, the education is uh, continuously uh, going, uh, growing. But during that time, um, when I was a little kid, I, already, I was already good in painting. Um, yeah, but the, 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 the beginning of my career, I, just, I was very fascinated with, with cartoons. And then uh, I doodled a lot. Even when I was in the Philippine Senate, I always draw all the, the set. that's what I did in the Senate. I was supposed to be a technical writer, but uh, all the time I was drawing the senators and then like, if I like the senator, I'll put a, you know, um, uh, if I don't like the senator, I'll put devil's horn. Um, and they're very realistic. So, and then when I, I was starting, I, 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 I also, was influenced when I uh, was introduced into Mexican retablos. The, the Mexicans before, they, they like, if they have prayers, they, they put it in a painting. And then how they were painted was were very, very informal. Like, a, and then all, all the words are at the bottom. Like, pr prayer for, so that we can have a, a new baby or prayer for we can have a new house like that. So I was influenced by that. So I incorporated words, and then um, and the um, and the animations and cartoons and magazines like Mad, you know the the color combinations. It, it was very 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 you know very raw when I was starting. Like I was not influenced by by like certain movements or certain school of art. It's just like, like hit and run, you know? Uh, hit the, get the brush, hit, hit the canvas. It's like very raw, no plan at all. But now, you know, it's very different. Uh, these are my artworks from 15 years ago. The, um, and I can still say that uh, these are the artworks that I did wherein when I finished an artwork, I was really very happy. Uh, no, no, just self-satisfaction. And I uh, practice, you know, this one, it really took, took me like five months to do, so, to finish. But, uh, yeah. Somehow, it's very, it's a, it's a blessing that uh, I was not, uh, I didn't came from art school, you know. Because, because, um, I will be very limited when, when uh, which is, which is, I am undergoing now. You have to be very intellectual in, uh, when it comes to your, to your artworks. Yeah. That's fascinating. David, uh, I wonder if people understand what it takes to put a show like this together and to travel it around the world. I mean, you've had a little experience at that, and in particular this show. The, n the nice thing about this is I got to go to the Philippines twice um, mm -hmm. in the course of things, and uh, uh, Luis came here. Um, the, this this is a, was a bit of a complicated project because uh, it's difficult to... Uh, Philippines is not a place where uh, museum exhibitions come from often. So, uh, and we're, we're, we have, I have a desire to help change that because I think that um, I'm very interested in the influence of other cultures on our culture here and conversely how uh, we've influenced other cultures in the world. Uh, uh, and I wanted to mention a little bit about where things are in the exhibition, um, because I, um, I don't get, I, I, during the time that I was running the organizations that I previously was director of, I didn't get a chance to install works often. And one of the great pleasures to me of, of working with, uh, in, in the visual arts, is working first of all with the artists directly, and second, uh, of hanging, hanging the art. Um, the works on this side of the room here are all, uh, related to the politics 
that Louis experienced when he was uh, working in the Senate in, uh, in the Philippines and uh, his view of the politics of the Philippines. The ones, of course, behind us are also that way. At the same time, um, if I may say so, and I guess it's evident in the work, he was going through a very traumatic love affair and, um, and, and, uh, and didn't end well from what I understand. Uh, and there are works in the far end of the rooms down there that refer to his angst and, and, and transition there. Okay. Yeah, uh, when I was starting my career, my fiancé left me because I started, uh, because I decided to be an artist. Good thing because I, fa I met my wife. Yeah. <laughs> it did end well, actually. Of course, the others here, and they're on the back of this wall, are from, are from notebooks. And we, what we don't have is a part of this collection that are here uh, to entice you to look in the catalog that uh, I think the uh, American University has multiple copies of, uh, is that we don't have some of the works that are actually on the stationery from the Philippine Senate. So his uh, work while he was doing that, that I, I should mention, in, in deference to my former colleagues, that International Arts and Artists, my former organization, produced the lovely catalog that is somewhere drifting around here. That people and it yeah, it's an incredibly beautiful, amazing catalog. Yeah. And, and it's, it, yeah. it includes all the works that are in this exhibition, plus the remaining parts of the works that are in that are in uh, in this collection of almost 200 or more works. So uh, I've noticed that a lot of your characters are sort of half animal, you know, half uh, half aliens, uh, and I'm wondering what what you are, uh, what, what what role these figures play in in what you're trying to communicate. So I mean, you have these sort of hybrid sort of forms. That, uh, there, there there are certain things that that you cannot really. Uh, put in a painting like there there comes a time wherein the only way you can you can express or you can you can uh, say what you want to say is uh, to create a character or or that that would represent that something that you cannot explain right like for in literature um, like in music like you 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 just cannot explain it. You just want to hear it. Like you know. The president is all mouth. Yeah, the president is all mouth. I was like, I, I don't want to 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 paint her face. I, I mean, I mean to to make a painting of her face because because um, it, the language will not be really that strong and will not convey what you want to say. I want. I wanted to put, to project her as like someone who's just talking, 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 and not doing anything. So, it, 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 um, so that's the overall idea of how how I I incorporate those those uh, characters and uh, aliens and stuff. And uh, I guess it's mostly luck, but uh, the whole first floor has yeah. <laughs> uh, artists who are kind of a little bit on the same wavelength here in terms of uh, uh, distorting uh, reality, you know, for for some kind of expressive effect. Uh, have you had much time to look at the uh, the uh, the show over here? Uh, not not yet. Uh, I'll be I'll be here again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's w when I I'll go around because. Uh, this is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit. Yeah, nervous. I'm very nervous. I just want you to know that I'm very nervous. <laughs> okay, he's very nervous. Yeah, in the Philippines, when you're talking English straight, there, there's this phrase like, "Oh, I, I should, I should stop because my my nose is bleeding already." So the feeling is like that, and and my nose literally bleed, uh, bled uh, like an hour ago. Yeah. So what language uh, do you speak at home? I mean, what? Uh... We speak French and uh, Latin. No. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, in, um, Tagalog. Tagalog. Filip we call it Filipino. Yeah. Mm 
Um, but uh, in sc in school, we we yeah, I was during the dinner that we had three nights ago. Uh, Fetna, her wife, uh, asked if uh, how come we we can speak English, and I told them that uh, even the poor kids, when you go to the Philippines, and you ask and talk to them in English, they they can un they will understand you, and then like. Where is the church here? Or where is the mall here? Uh, the poor kid will say, ah, go, go, go straight there, and then you go left, and then you go right. Uh, English is our second language. Um, so, yeah. But, but not Spanish. We have some. Actually, there's still a province in, 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 in the Philippines where in these, the, the, there's this unique Spanish uh, way of uh, how do you call that? Chabacano. Yeah, it's uh, still Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. half Spanish, and um, we can still understand them. Uh, but yeah, Americans really erase all the memories of Spain when when we were under the U.S. Even the the way of uh, the t teaching, teaching kids, like um, the, the, there's this big, big ship that came to the Philippines and then all of the people there, uh, teachers, started teaching English to all kids, all, all the Filipinos there. So totally erasing the, the culture and uh, the first thing that you, you, you want to do if you want to erase that culture is to erase the language that they, they known for. Uh, this, 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 this heroes that I was talking, I was talking about, they speak fluently in Spanish. Jose Rizal speaks like ten, ten or twelve languages. It's like when he is in Paris. When he was in Paris, he enters a what you call this a salon or bar. People was the 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 Parisians will say, "Wow, the enlightened one is here," because it's really genius you know um how i wish we we are, we are filipinos now can can be can have that kind of education are there any questions uh you would like to uh ask jack referred to some of the imagery here in this painting and otherwise as the kind of thing you don't learn when you go to art school. Well, you didn't go to art school, and what interests me as the, is the things I see that you do learn about when you go to art school. For example, there's Michelangelo and maybe Wayne Thiebaud, but maybe Dutch. Uh, tell us about that. Um, how? I don't know. Um, my 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 son is six years old, and when, once he hears a melody or a music passively, and then after three days he will hum that that music. That's talent, right? Maybe because I I, I don't want to like even uh, even when I was a kid. I will look at faces, and then I will already convert them into paint. That's how, how I see things. Like, um, when I'm looking at you, I know the, the colors that I will mix to paint you in 30 minutes, you know, I can do that. So we, with, with the technical things that you mentioned, I think it's very natural. It just came naturally. And then... Um, Actually, after this series, year 2008 to 2016, I studied um, the technical way of how to create uh, traditionally painted paintings, artworks, like using lead white, preparing the canvas. So after this series, I was painting classical paintings. So it just came naturally. Like, you know there's something wrong when, you, when, you, when you're looking at artworks. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, right over here. Could you talk about the difference in size and reason for it between those that are over there? Are they part of your our, our, uh, what was it, our, uh, archival collection? And these are more recent. Is that the reason for it? Was it because you didn't have the actual supplies to paint those uh, with what you had over here, more artistic supplies? Um. Yeah, there, there, actually, there's so many works like that that I was, wasn't able to, to make into a big work because uh, during that time, I, I really had no money to buy paints. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the reason. The yeah, you'd had a good job, uh, and, and you were able to use that money to buy materials Right, but then, but yeah. then later. When I was working, the money that I saved, I bought lots of art materials. That's why I was able to, to, to make this. But uh, for them to be transferred into a bigger works, it was it was already struggling years because uh, you know, couldn't replenish my art art uh, supplies. Um, yeah, so the the first, I was I was like. Literally peddling these artworks in in a mall in Manila, so that I can sell. If I I was able to sell one, I would be able to buy art materials. But nobody bought even single artwork from this series. That's why they're still intact. Yeah. yeah. Um, sure. Since 2016, have you been motivated to get back into political art? Or what would motivate you and what would you do today with political art? How would you represent it? The, the sentiments of, uh, that I had during that time, uh, I thought that uh, if, I, if I create an artwork, I can change the world. Uh, there's, th there's this certain notion that uh, if I portray that, into an artwork, somehow I'm changing the world. But uh, when I, uh, 10 years, 15, 15 years after, um, I realized if you want to change the world, you can still do it, uh, you can still express it in art, but I'm more of a practical side now. Like, I'm sending poor kids to school, uh, coming from a, um, the idea wherein the only way you can change society or you can help society is to educate people. That's the only way. Educate the, the poor people. If we educate them, um, like if you, if you put 10 kids to school, those 10 kids will, 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 will have a, you know, a better future. Uh, that is better than um, creating an artwork and saying, this will change the world. So, I'm more in a pra practical person now. Uh, and art is like, yeah, I'm, my artworks now is, looks like I came from an art school. Over here. I'm intrigued by your interest in Mad Magazine and uh, how it had, I guess, part of American culture for many people, even like myself, you know, who who grew up, uh, you know, in Chicago, and I remember getting the first edition of Mad Magazine probably when I was like 10 years old. And uh, it had an effect on not only myself, but my friends and everything else. And I'm really intrigued by the fact that, you know, it's, it had an effect on someone and another from another country uh, far away from our culture. Uh, tell me about how it influenced you or had it... Um. Yeah, but first, I, I just want to share to you that, uh, yeah, somehow, geographically, USA is far from Philippines. But when you go there, you're like in, in the US. We, we, watch, we watch the same TV series. We, 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 we buy the latest shoes in the U, from the US. We have that in the Philippines now. So... It was not hard.
for us to appreciate that and uh, to be influenced with 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 uh, like music sometimes um musicians or artists from here um they're already famous in the philippines but here you don't know them you know we 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 we, we we're living now in a flat world wherein everything is getting influenced very fast with the internet but even before like i don't know somehow we had access with 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 magazines and a uh, popular culture um and Mad Magazine really changed my view about art. You know, they're really good with, they're really excellent draftsmen, you know. And um, for, for, for a kid, uh, for, for the mind of a kid, it was like, wow, this is something new. This is great. And uh, I'm not the only one art, I'm not the only artist influenced by that. There are so many artists from Manila now that, uh, you know, um, they started like the, their career that you know they were influenced by by that uh mad magazine um robert williams you know the famous low bro artist in the in san francisco so yeah good thing there was this uh comic store wherein i was able to buy that if if not, uh, I would not be doing this. I would be a basketball player. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, Louis, I want to thank you for bringing your show here. Thank you. And uh, yeah. being here tonight. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, David. This would not be possible without them. And, uh, and also Ken. Ken Akuta is the charming guy wearing green. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I was, I'm still nervous. No? <laughs>